In today's video, we will be salvaging components from a DVD player video recorder combo unit. This video will provide a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to disassemble the device, as well as the useful components you will find within. This device was manufactured by LG, and the specific model number is LCV737. Overall, it took us only an hour to disassemble the device, and an hour and 15 minutes to depopulate the circuit boards. If you find this video useful, it would help us a lot if you smash the like button so we can make more useful videos in the future. Also, consider subscribing to our channel and tapping on the bell icon so you can be notified when we upload new content. As this is an educational video, make sure to add your comments, compliments, our complaints below so we can use your feedback to make better content. Now that that is out of the way, let's dive into today's video. The first step is to remove the four mounting screws from the back of the device. Once these screws are removed, the entire top cover of the device will slide off. To make the disassembly of this device easier, it is important to remove the two black screws near the interface ports so that the circuit boards can be easily lifted out later in the salvage process. With the top cover removed, we can see that the previous user left some A-list movies within the device. We can also see the power board, the VCR mechanics, the DVD player, and the main logic board. To gain access to the logic board, we will first need to remove the four screws that secure the VCR components to the device chassis. The logic board, power board, and DVD player are secured to the chassis with eight different screws. Looking at the two circuit boards, we can see some decent salvage components such as a transformer, various capacitors, micro buttons, a few inductors, some diodes, and some integrated circuit chips. Let's depopulate the circuit boards and the rest of the device and see what we can salvage. In this depopulation project, it seems we once again found a large assortment of electrolytic capacitors. In total we have 119 capacitors with the most abundant types being 4.7 microfarad, 47 microfarad and 22 microfarad measurements. To buy all of these capacitors from a supplier would cost over $35. We salvaged 5 polymer capacitors and 2 film capacitors from the DVD VCR combo unit. The 2 film capacitors are 100 nanofarads, while the polymer capacitors ranged in value from 2.7 nanofarads, all the way up to 100 nanofarads. Due to the high value of a few of these capacitors, we managed to grab almost $12 in salvage. Ceramic capacitors can be a gamble when it comes to salvage. They crack easily and although some capacitors are worth a lot for resale, some of them are very cheap to just buy new. For this project, we gambled and lost because these 5 capacitors are only worth a dollar. There was one 0.02 mH inductor and two 0.03 mH inductors on the power circuit board. There was also one choke inductor which had a reading of 8.8 mH. In total these inductors will let us add a little over $6 to our salvage total. We also removed the main step-down transformer and a small RF coil transformer from the device. These two devices allow us to add another $5 to our salvage profit. We successfully desoldered 10 micro buttons, one single pole reed switch and one double pole reed switch from the circuit boards. Although these switches are only worth a few bucks, we can definitely hold on to them for future projects. There were six diodes that we depopulated from the circuit boards. There were two different Schottky diodes and three rectifier diodes. There was one last diode that we could not hunt down the datasheet for. This diode had the code 1064 printed on it but it does not give us any results. If you know what kind of diode this is, please let us know in the comments section. Although these six diodes did not even surpass $3, we will hold on to them for future projects. There were four integrated circuit chips we safely pulled from the device. We found an optocoupler, a rectifier chip, a switch power supply chip, and a multimedia filter chip. These chips would cost almost $9 to purchase online. It is generally a waste of our time to pull resistors out of any project because they are so cheap to buy new. However, these three resistors fell out of the circuit board while we were removing other valuable components. We have a 1.5 mega ohm resistor, a 56 kilo ohm resistor, and a 0.65 ohm resistor. To place a value on these resistors, we would need to literally round up to the next nickel. There were four DC motors in the LG DVD player video recorder combo. 
These small brushless motors are very useful for projects, but can also be resold online for a profit. To purchase all four motors would be over $20. Three sets of interface ports were removed from the device. Two blocks of RCA ports and one component port were all that could be salvaged. Since there is no dollar value online for these components, we can just use an arbitrary value of 60 cents. There were a few interesting components we removed from the LG DVD player VCR recorder combo. We have a decent segment display as well as four crystal oscillators and two crystal resonators. We also found a mode selector switch, a high heat resistor, a ceramic surge absorber capacitor, and an infrared receiver. The most valuable item in these leftover components is the laser diode assembly. Once we calculate all the odds and ends we found, we have over $60 in component salvage. We took in a small selection of screws and fasteners when we took apart this device. They are divided into coarse threaded screws for attaching to plastic, and fine threaded screws for attaching metal together. We also took out four rubber vibration absorbers from the DVD drive which we can use for spacers in other projects. As it is very hard to determine the exact value of these screws, we have just used a basic value calculated by weight and quantity. There were some nice springs in the videotape machinery which we managed to unhook and save. Spare springs are always useful to have in a component drawer and even if we give these springs a value of 50 cents, they are sure to come in handy one day. Plastic gears, what can we do with plastic gears? Although we currently do not have any projects that require gears, at least we have some just in case. It is very hard to determine a value for these gears, so once again we are going to use 50 cents and call it a day. Every VCR contains a powerful motor which allows the tape to pass through the reading and recording drums. These motors are worth money to anyone who repairs VCR equipment, but we are more interested in the enameled wire within. This wire is great for making jewelry and crafts and would cost about $6 to buy. When we combine everything together that we were able to salvage, we got some high-value motors, inductors, and special capacitors. However, there were no MOSFET components, or very many IC chips. The device took one hour to disassemble and a little over one hour to depopulate. When we combine all of the salvaged components together, we are left with a combined total of $140.48. Hopefully, this video has given you some insight into the useful and valuable components you can find in everyday electronic devices. If you found this video useful, please do not forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and comment below. To get notifications on when we post more videos of how we are just scrapping by. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the ding dong bell to be notified when we upload new content. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.